Hello and welcome to WTF, where we help you transform food in your kitchen. I'm Janie. I'm Roman. And on this channel, we talk about unique ingredients, techniques, and show you new recipes for your kitchen. And today, I'm really excited to kick off kind of a little meal prep series that we were talking about, specifically focusing on how do you make delicious foods that you can freeze and then thaw for a weeknight meal. And I really love this topic because I'm someone who loves to cook a lot on the weekends, I but I don't so. have a lot of time on the weeknights and I get really lazy. So if I can make things ahead, pull them out and just pop them in the oven, all the better. Yep. So we're going to kick off today's series with... Pot pies. Yes, <laughs> one of our favorites. We're excited because we both love pot pies. Yes, I love a good pot and, pie. And how many pot pies did you say you ate? About uh, three times a week, and I actually Crazy. had one last night. Yeah, so that's the, uh, the old Marie Callender. I, love, you love, I love a good Marie Callender yeah. pot pie, for sure. So I, I will say I don't love Marie Callender as much, but what I do love is that some of the pot pies that we have in stores, they come with this really beautiful, silky gravy. So yep. when we think about free slaw, often the sauce breaks. That's yeah. kind of the problem. That's usually the problem for sure. Right, so Roman, what, how did you tackle that problem when we were thinking about, okay, how do we make a delicious pot pie that we can freeze and then pull out later? Well, first thing I did was uh, I went through my old standby and that's the Marie Callender pot pie. Okay. Uh, love the pot no pie. Sponsorship. <laughs> no, 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 no sponsorship. No, no, no sponsorships. <laughs> but it's just my favorite, so um, that's why I mentioned it. Because I've made pot pies before using, you know, your basic French bechamel recipes mm -hmm. and whatnot. Yep. And if you freeze it and you thaw it out, it breaks, you yep. know. Um, and so I wanted this to make something that I could freeze and then come back to later. And uh, I think I did it. It's, it's awesome, this recipe. Um, and it's maybe not as good as Marie Callender's, um, but I, it's... He's being modest. I think it's way better <laughs> it's, than Marie it's Callender's. Good. It's actually, it's actually yeah. better. I, I have to say it's actually better. Um, and so we start with a couple of hydrocolloids and a freestyle um, 210S, which is great for freestyle, and allows you to put the sauce together, and then when you thaw it out and, and bake it in the oven, it doesn't split apart. Yeah, let's jump right into making the sauce, because one of the things we want to make sure that was important is that this is kind of a minimum effort project. Yeah, it's If you easy. are like, I want to make my dough from scratch, I want to like do all this stuff, you certainly can, but if you're like me and you're like, I just want to take my pre-bought dough, I want to take my frozen vegetables and just dump it all in, yep. you can do that as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, exactly. Especially for mm -hmm. this one, we went super easy. Uh, Star bought puff pastry. Uh, I went to the supermarket and I got one of their roast chickens and just cut the breast up. So this is super easy. Uh, the hardest part is just like putting this together, and I wouldn't call that hard. We're just mm -hmm. gonna all we're right. gonna do a little bit of mixing and we're gonna do a little bit of cooking. Yeah, here. let's show everybody how it's done. All right. So first, what we're gonna do is we're gonna start with a nice little chicken stock, Star bought chicken stock, and we're gonna get that into our blender. And then we have our dry ingredients, which I am going to dry mix mm -hmm. uh, to make sure that it's very consistent. So we have a little bit of tapioca starch right here. We have some 210S, which I was talking about earlier. Yep. That's the gum arabic and xanthan. It's a stabilizer. Stabilizer. Mm -hmm. We got a little bit of salt. We got a little bit of sugar. And then we have a little bit of methicel. This is a low viscosity methicel. And that's gonna just thicken up the sauce just a little bit to give it that silky mouthfeel. Exactly. Mm -hmm. All right, so once we got that in here, we're just gonna mix it up just so that when we disperse this into the chicken stock as it's blending, it's uh, incorporated. All right, so we got that there. We'll just give our a little mix and then we're just gonna slowly add the dry ingredients. Yeah, it's always important to slowly mix it in because if you dump all those hydrocolloids in at once, it's gonna clump up It'll right clump real up right fast. Exactly. Yeah. So. And one of the fun things I don't know if if you're someone. So one of the things that Rome and I had talked about when he started doing this and reading recipes is I was like, this is how you read an ingredient label to understand how much of things are going in there. If you're like, I would like to know, leave that in the comments because I. I thought about making yeah. an episode around it, but I didn't know people would think it's boring. So. I think we should, to be totally honest yeah. with you. I because that was like one of the biggest things when you know we started working together. When you showed me the basics of how to read the ingredients list, I was amazed because I had looked at ingredients before and I could never tell like how things went mm -hmm. or why things went. But then you know just like just uh, just that knowledge alone helped me break down recipes extremely All easy. right, if you're interested, drop that in the comments. All right, okay. so now that we have everything going, we got the dry ingredients in with the chicken stock, mm -hmm. I have a little bit of vegetable oil here, which I'm gonna slowly 
add as it's mixing, and we'll just emulsify that into there. And as you can see, that is getting nice and thick. Mm -hmm. It's very like creamy already. At, they're already. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so I'll let I'll usually let this go for about. 30, 40 seconds just to make sure that everything is nice and incorporated. Mm -hmm. And then once that's done, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pull that as we're at 135. So I'm going to stop it. And then we're going to go ahead and we're going to get that into the pot. And you can already see it's like, it feels like it's a bechamel because it's so white and like, creamy, but yep. there's no dairy but in there's here. There's no dairy at all. Mm -hmm. And that's awesome. And uh, for those that, you know, are vegan or whatnot, you can use a uh, vegetable stock if you're mm -hmm. going to make this. Yeah, you know, it makes no difference. Doesn't have to have chicken in there. So we're going to turn this on to about a medium, uh, about medium high heat, and I'm going to get my whisk out. And what you want to do is, as this is coming up to temperature, mm -hmm. you want to whisk it because it's going to, uh, the heat's going to start activating those those hydrocolloids, mm -hmm. and it'll start to thicken up and whatnot. So you just kind of want to break those down. So once once it starts heating to about medium, you'll start, as you can see, it's starting to bubble, and then you want to start whisking that up okay. as it's But you're up. not, like, bringing it to a boil. No, no, no. You just want to heat it up. All you want to do is, is activate those hydrocolloids. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's kind of nice because both 210S and Methacel, like, they don't technically need to be activated in that way, but that certainly helps to heat it up a little bit. Yeah. And see, as you can see, it's starting to thicken it's up a little so bit. It's already so thick, yeah. And I'm just going just gonna to incorporate that mm -hmm. and break it down into each other. Look at that. That's, I mean, like, look how smooth that is. Yeah. It's incredible. And I'm, it, it's so funny because the first time I, I actually put this together and I got it right, I, like, I was, like, told my wife, I was like, you know what? I no longer need uh, to go to the supermarket to get pot pies. I could just make it at home. Well, myself. yeah, and I used to make pot pies with the bechamel, and I'd just be stirring for like forever trying to get it to <laughs> thicken up yeah. correctly. And oh. that, look at that. Yeah. Look how beautiful that came out. I do love that. All right, pie. so that's done. Now we're ready to go. So all we got to do is get our dough, get our vegetables, get our chicken, and we can put our pot pie together. All right, we're going to reset the table. We'll be right back. All right, see you then. All right, so Roman's going to walk you step by step through the assembly of this pie. For today, we are making a couple of individual pies so that we can each have one. But you can also make this in a regular size pie tin as well. Yep. So if you have the same amount, you can make four of these little pies. But we like little pies. So let's make little pies. What do we one, do? One note, just yes. make sure that the vessel that you do use can come out of the oven and come out of the freezer and go in the oven Ooh, okay. without cracking because mm -hmm. that's a major thing. All right, good point. All right, so let's start. Super simple. We have some uh, puff pastry here that I that we're going to use. Oh, another thing about the puff pastry, which I didn't say before, is that mm -hmm. um, puff pastry comes frozen. Yep. So you can thaw this out and then make your pie and then refreeze it without any ill effects to the puff pastry itself. Okay. So mm -hmm. very simple. Um, I already, as you can see, I have a couple of squares here, but I already cut these into rounds. Mm -hmm. So you want to just get that in there. Mm -hmm. And you want to start off with a couple of spoonfuls of your sauce. Look how smooth that is. That's so beautiful. Mm -hmm. You get some chicken in there. Break that up. And then some vegetables. You can use any vegetables you'd like. Um, yeah, the filling really doesn't matter. Same thing for like what you can make whatever you like. Exactly. The secret right here is how do you keep the sauce together? And once Roman's done with this, we're going to actually do a little bake-off of one pie that has our special sauce with our hydrocolloids and then the same recipe with yep. no hydrocolloids. And we're going to show you how they come out. Yep. And uh, so I put a little bit more sauce on top to cover that. And then I do, I'm a big fan of the chicken, so I'm going to throw <laughs> a little bit more chicken on there. All right. And just a little bit more vegetable. We like our pies hearty. Yes, we do. All right. So now once you're done with that, you want to get a little bit of your egg wash on the lip of this. That looks so good. It's not even cooked yet. It's not, I know. It mm -hmm. does look great. Just the colors. That sauce is beautiful. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to put this right on top. And then I'm going to cut around. 
Now you can just you can just cut this to fit your your mold, but you want to give yourself a little bit of space because uh, the dough tends to retract a little bit, so that's okay. why I made this one uh, overlap so much. Mm -hmm. And then you just cut around it, and then once you get to about a half, you can feel underneath it. Once you get to about a quarter inch um, past the rim of that, you can start to give yourself your nice little. Uh, I love doing this. This is like my favorite part. <laughs> this is like this is like grandma used to make, just like that. Yeah. And so even though we made this one, we're going to pull a couple that we pre-made right. out of the freezer since yep. the purpose of this episode is really, can you make it ahead? Because I'm sure exactly. this would be delicious, yeah, freshly you can, baked. Yeah, you can totally do this. Yeah. I have, you know, in my experiments, I cook some, you know, fresh, but that's not the idea. So, mm -hmm. all right, so once this is done, you're ready to go into your freezer. All right, so we're going to come back in a few minutes with our frozen pot yep. pie and our control and we're going to show you how they both came out. Yeah. All right, we have our pot pies baked, we have our frozen modernist pantry pot pie, we have our control and we're about to break into them. But first I want to remind you to subscribe and like and hit that notification button so that you get notified of our future meal prep episodes or mm -hmm. any other content that you might like to see. Okay, Roman, I would say first off, uh, on the surface, these two look exactly the same, so... They do look great. You want to crack open one, I'll do the other? Let's do it. All right. So, so I, I, have, I have the control right here. Green right. is control. And I got the MP. Okay. Ooh. Oh, that... Oh, oh man. They're like, I'm taking credit like I made this crust. Oh, man. Look at that. I'm going to take this little piece off mm -hmm. right here. So, first, of course, the visual inspection as I'm making a mess. <laughs> So I kind of want to see, I don't know if the camera can capture it really because you kind of need to be right here. But this one has a much more Man, creamy look. look. Yeah. This one is like a little soupy. It's not, I've seen it broken worse, but it's not like completely, Yep. it's not fully together. This one looks that better. That one is great. Yeah. First, we're going to dip into the control. All right, you first. Okay. I just totally burned myself. Mm, me too. Mm -hmm. Ooh, it is hot. It is literally really fresh hot. out of the oven. Um, I mean, the flavors are great. The gravy is a little thin. I. It tastes fine. It tastes okay. Oh, one mm -hmm. thing. One thing about using a roux and whatnot for texture is, no matter how much you try to cook that flour out, mm -hmm. you can still taste it. Yeah. And that's what I can taste in that. That I can still taste that. It's. it's it is good, the flavor is good, you know, seasoning and whatnot, mm -hmm. but I still get that floury taste mm -hmm. when, I, when I bite into that. Yeah, it's by no means terrible. I think this is how I, you know, that's how, you know, the, they people, normally come yeah. out, but I want to taste a control. I want to taste our MP version. All right, let's, go, let's do it. Okay, oh, so you can kind of see. that is. That, yeah. that is beautiful. Like this, again, I'm so surprised. It always looks like there's dairy in here, but no dairy. No dairy at all. I'm going to learn my lesson. I'm going to blow <laughs> on it. I just totally burned my tongue on the last one. That was terrible. I was like, ah, don't show pain. Mmm. Oh, it's so good. Mmm. Exactly. Really smooth. Uh, texturally balanced. This, that's what I, that's yes. like one of the things mm -hmm. that I like about this. Texturally balanced. Mm. Obviously stayed together very well seasoned. I would say, I mean, I pretty much made the sauces exactly the same way, mm -hmm. seasoning wise and whatnot. Yeah. Mm. But the, the difference, like I, I mentioned earlier, the difference in that floury taste, whether you make a bechamel or whatnot, you're, it's just, it, you can't compare it to that. This is like super silky smooth. Mm -hmm. um, this is actually, I remember earlier I said, this is way better than Mary Kellner. Yeah. Sorry, sorry Mary. <laughs> but this is way better. It's, it's yeah. just um, perfectly balanced. I love it. Yeah, I love how silky, I'm yeah. gonna double dip. Okay. <laughs> Don't come at me people, but it's like. I'll wait till we're off camera. The texture is so good on here. Like this is, it's so, it's not bad. It's No, it's but. not bad. It's not bad at all. And um, you know, actually, mm. cool. you know, Normally, if you make a pot pie, mm -hmm. this is this is basically where you're going. Yeah. Normal, you know, uh, normal household mm -hmm. making a pot pie, but this is just like our. This is just the modest pantry version of a great pot pie. That's all yeah. it is. Um, this is leaks better to me. It's fantastic. You can get this recipe in the link in the description below, yeah. and uh, you know, it, you'll, I, I promise you, if you try it, you will never go back to. 
and doing a no, race. No, it's not even mm -hmm. a it is not even a contest. Mm -hmm. It's not even a contest. All right, so we're gonna probably eat this off camera. Off camera. First. And until <laughs> next week, from here in the Modernist Pantry Test Kitchen, I'm Janie. I'm Roman. Oh, I oh, dropped that. some of this on my hand. I was like, it, oh, it, really it was that first bite I had yeah. of, of the oh. control was so hot. <laughs> This Popeye, like, I'm totally gonna make this because Chloe, so Chloe came in one day and got to taste it. And she's like, she's, she's you, the one that, like, yeah, can you verify it? Like, mm -hmm. all right, this is good. This one's good. This one's not. Yeah, if a table <laughs> eater, you know it's good. Yep.